This, ladies and gentlemen, is my Festool Capex. And I love this saw. It's my favorite saw in the whole entire world. And I do have to mention to you guys that this is an ad for Festool. I signed a contract. I, to be honest, I didn't really read the whole thing. Something about your soul, I signed it. All right, we're good. Um, I'm just kidding. Jokes aside, I got a lot to cover today. This is my Capex. I love this saw for real, but it is lacking one thing and we're gonna add it today. And if you watch my videos, you know I have this attachment on all of my other miter saws, and that is the Kaizen miter fence. So don't hate me for this Festool. I am gonna be drilling into the saw today, just the fence part. We're gonna modify it and alter it. And I'm gonna talk you guys through everything the Kaizen fence can do. I think I'm gonna cover everything, but this is an important video because I get questions about this attachment every week. People are like, what's that fence? What, how did you, how, where do you get that? You know, how did you attach it? What, we're gonna get into it. So let's attach it. Real quick before we attach it, what am I even talking about? Well, it's this right here. This is the Kaizen miter fence system. This is version three. I actually personally own version one and two because I've bought them through the years as he's upgraded them. But this is version three, obviously the latest and greatest. There's a really awesome feature with this one that I'm really excited to share with you. And, and I joked about being sponsored by Festool at the beginning of this. That was obviously a joke. I'm not sponsored by Festool. I'm also not sponsored by Kaizen. If you buy this, I get nothing. If you don't buy this, I still get nothing. So we'll drop these in position right here and get a look at how glorious that looks. I mean, besides the fact of what this does for your miter saw, it, it also looks really awesome. And this is kind of the version three brass, brass type finish. And this is solid aluminum, by the way. We're gonna be marking this and drilling through our factory fence, but I'm gonna turn this all around and show you guys where I'm gonna drill. Looking at the back of the miter saw here, we can see how our fence is gonna be positioned. And it doesn't really matter where you drill these holes because you could slide this fence around separate from the function of sliding your factory fence. I've got this marked right here, and I'm gonna drill a hole right where that mark is and right where this mark is. How do I know to drill right there? Well, there's a milled T-track in the back side of this fence here. And that is exactly where those holes are lined up with. With our holes drilled in the kit, you get this little T-track bolt it slides in to the back of the fence and this is how it attaches so i'll get those in position you can see those are there they're not going to fall out and then it's a matter of lining those up with the holes that i drilled so i'll get get them in position and now our fence is in position we can get our cam clamps on the back of it back side here we could put our washers on we'll put that soft black washer on first and then our typical washer and then our cam clamp so this is if you've seen cam clamps before, this is what they look like, but they're gonna thread onto that bolt and then we can cinch them down once we get closer. So I'll get this tightened down. The way these work is once you get them snug, then you just push the clamp feature down and that holds them tight. So we've now installed both of our Kaizen fences onto our factory fences and you can see that they will still slide with the factory fence. And then when I lock the factory fence down, it's snug. So this is exactly what we want. Our installation is complete. Now we just have to add the accessories that really open this thing up. And this is what I get the most questions about. So let's start with the drop-in T-tracks. So I've got these right here. These red pieces of aluminum are the T-tracks that go on the face of the miter saw fence. So that drops in right there. Got another one right here in my back pocket that drops in for this side. Now with this system, you'll get this accessory kit. Inside of this includes two thumb screws, and these are for the backs of these T-tracks. These, there's a threaded slot, or hole rather, right behind this T-track, and that'll keep it in position. This is what I use for cutting crown and all types of projected moldings, offset panel moldings. Pretty much anything you can think of is done on this little T-track that goes up the fence. So what this does is it takes your problem, like typically we'd cut crown, you know, using the table of the saw. Well, this, this puts it up, up the fence and allows you to still have your table free. You don't have some crown stop jig in the way. 
it's on your actual fence. So huge, huge improvement. This is one of the reasons I actually bought this thing originally, and this will just thread in the back here. So thumb screw right there. And now we have these five millimeter shelf pins. So these shelf pins are exactly what they sound like. They're shelf pins for holding up shelving, like in cabinetry, five millimeter. All these holes on this system are five millimeter. So if you wanted to, you know, set up a crown stop, you throw it in one of these holes, tighten your thumb screw and you're set up. And you can see how, if I put this in my top, <laughs> my top uh, hole up here and then bring my jig up, you can see I'm cutting a massive crown that's actually impossible because it's above even the rails of this Capex. But you get the idea, you can pretty much do anything. So you can put it here, you know, slide it up anywhere. I mean, the opportunities are endless. And then the other thing is these shelf pins, every hole that you see here, like for instance, right there, I can drop that shelf pin in that bottom hole. And now I have a micro stop. So if I'm cutting material, say like, you know, this little box is my material. I could butt up against that, make a cut, butt up against that, make a cut. It's the first system that allows you for such micro, micro stops. And then just like how this slides, you can open up your fence here and then you can slide to dial that stop in right where you want it. And then if you don't like it there, well then you can loosen the Kaizen fence and then come off that even. And this is actually stopping because Festool has this little adjustable nut right here that, that'll allow this to go even further, but I'm not gonna mess with it right now. Let's go ahead and drop in the thing that I'm most excited about for this version three, and that is this right here. This is a piece of marine grade plastic with four countersink holes in it. So this right here is the first ever zero clearance miter saw fence insert. We'll go ahead and loosen our fence. We'll get these in position here. And with that there, I'll kind of split the difference because this is my first time ever doing this. So this just locks in right there. You can see I've got threaded holes right here where this will be attached. So with that attached, you can see the whole system moving now. That's pretty, pretty wild right there. So what we're gonna do, we're going to get it centered as close to center as possible. I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's really not that important. Then I'm gonna lock it down. And then what we would do is we would just cut through that. So we do our zero and then our typical cuts, which mine would be 45 and 45, of course, which most people's typical cuts are. And then we have complete zero clearance right there. And then when, like I said, when these get damaged, you just unscrew them and replace them. So I'll let you guys know, this is my first time using this system. I'm really excited about it, but I'll have to let you know how I like it and how these things hold up. So we're gonna attach this and we'll put it right there. And of course we've got one on this right side as well. And what these are for, they're for a clamp like this, this kind of quick mount clamp system. This one's from Armor Tool and he ships these with the systems as well. And these drop right in, quick hold down. It's, it's right there when you want it out of the way, you just pull it out of the way. And this is still loose because I've only got that hand tightened. But these are awesome. I use these a lot when I would have, on version one, when I would be cutting extreme angles, which brings me to, I believe the last accessory on this thing, and that is the extreme angle jig. So this here is the extreme angle jig. I'm sure some of you guys have seen this because I did a YouTube short that got like millions of views showing this, and a lot of people seem to have a sparked an interest in this system from that, and that's kind of why I wanted to make this video as well. But what this is, this is a version three extreme angle. And the difference is it's got this sliding function right here. So it's got this T-track on the back that slides like that and this thumb screw in the front where you can tighten it in position. So why does it have this slider? Well, let me take this out. I'll show you guys where this drops in. So we'll pull out our little pin attachment here. So it drops in and then it has that, that thumb screw right there where you tighten it. So the reason this is adjustable like that because this doesn't know where you made your zero clearance insert cut. So if I, you know, had this, you know, scooted a little bit to the right, well then I could scoot this over to the right and account for that. 
or if I'm you know, not dead center, this just makes it to where you don't have to be perfect when you cut this. But once you get this to your zero clearance position, you just tighten this down. That holds it sturdy to the fence, and then you cut your extreme angles, which I've talked about multiple times. I'm not gonna get into it now, but basically zero degrees where I'm at right now is now 45 degrees when you hold your material on this extreme angle fence. There's a ton that this thing does. I highly recommend going to Tom's YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description where he talks about all the different things you can do with this. I think it's an amazing system. I wouldn't be telling you if I didn't think it was other than the fact that Tom did pay me $1.5 million to make this video. So I, I'm not biased though, I promise you that. No, I'm totally joking, but uh, I, like I said, I'm not sponsored by Tom at all, but what he did want to do, he wanted to give away one of these fences. And here is the kind of parameters of getting one of these fences. You can win one of these. All you have to do is comment on this video and go follow Tom's Instagram page. If you don't have Instagram, well, then you can't enter. You got to have Instagram. You got to go follow it. I'll link it below. And we're going to check it out and see if you're a trim carpenter. That's the only way you can win one of these. We're going to look at your Instagram page. If you have trim carpentry stuff on there and you're doing, you know, carpentry for a living, you're entered to win. So that's why we need your Instagram. We don't want to give this to a homeowner. I'm sorry, homeowners and DIY. This, you just wouldn't, you just really wouldn't get the value out of this professional system versus like a guy who's doing it every day. And I wanted to kind of throw this in at the end of the video for the people who watch all the way through who are seriously interested in the system. So again, all you got to do is comment below and then follow Tom's Instagram down below. So uh, that about wraps it up for this little introduction, kind of overview, installing this and hitting some of the main features. But let me know if you guys have any questions down below. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one.